This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 4-12-23, and this is show number 483. So we got the long awaited for, the anxiously awaited for CPI report today, Nick. <laughs> yes, we got the CPI report, and um, the market seems to love it, at least initially. But I have to say, Kerry, we had a big uh, rally at the open and a pretty good fade right now. So, um, you know, as I always say, we could look at these numbers every which way you want. I never believe them. Um, you know, we could talk about them, but uh, it's all about the market reaction and the reaction to the news. It's not how they open. It's how they close. And at this time, you know, the trend is still up, but you know, these markets, if they, uh, if they fade, you know, and they fade with volume, then you got to be really careful. This little run up that we've had in a very, you know, choppy environment could come to an end abruptly. But right now, um, you know, we'll see where we finish the day. But, uh, you know, you got to love these uh, CPI reports and PPI and everything else that they throw at us. Um, you know, if you believe it, you believe it. If you don't, you don't. But uh, the market will tell you what you really need to know. Right. So what is the market telling us today? Well, like I said, we started out with a pretty strong rally. The S&P 500 um, early at the start of the day was around uh, 4130. And now we're back to, you know, 4115. So, you know, it's uh, it's been a pretty good little fade here. It's not a big day by any means. Volume still looks very light to me. So, you know, we're just getting some backing and filling. Um, you know, it's, it's not a big day. Uh, really, you have the spiders or the S&P 500 slightly in the money. You have the NASDAQ today basically flat. And then you have the Dow, you know, just up about two-tenths of 1%. So it, it's really kind of a wishy-washy type day. But, um, you know, we'll see. Right now, the trend is up and the volume is light. So the market still may have a little bit more upside in the near term. All right. And uh, what of, so energy stocks you mentioned, financial stocks, uh, what are they looking like? Yeah. So energy is a major group right now because everybody's been, you know, all over energy and they're holding up pretty well today for the most part. You got crude oil a little bit higher, Exxon Mobil slightly in the green, uh, Conoco is in the green by one and a half percent. That's having a decent session. And then you look at the, um, uh, other, you know, names like Oxy, they're a little bit in the green. So energy's holding up today. It's, it's doing fairly well. The services names are not so great, but you got to keep an eye, like you said, on these financials. And um, right at the, at the start of the day, the financials were really strong, but the KBE, which is the regional bank ETF, it's just rolled over now. So now it's down 34 cents. Uh, earlier in the day, it was up about 40 cents. So that's, you know, where the problems lie, the banking crisis um, really stems in the regionals for the most part, even though I think it's all banks, but uh, the regionals have gotten hit the hardest. So you got to watch that pretty closely. If this regional bank ETF, which is the KRE, everybody should be tracking that. If that really starts to fall apart or makes new lows, then there's real problems out here. And um, that would be a good indication that the banking crisis is back in full steam, despite all the central bank's recent efforts to uh, keep liquidity in the system. All right. So, uh, gold, uh, where are we at today? Yeah, so gold is is kind of, uh, you know, it's a little bit positive. It's nothing terrible out here. Gold is very, very overbought at the moment, but it's up about one-tenth of 1% 1 as we speak, still above 2,000. And, um, you know, it's just chopping around. The one thing about gold, though, it's very overbought here. So, you know, you have to be careful. But I have to say, gold is now the new safe haven. It's where everybody is going, especially when you have fear out here. So, I'm not sure it's going to, you know, come in that that sharply until this this fear really leaves the market, and I'm not sure that's that's ending anytime soon. All right, and silver, uh, silver is over twenty five bucks, and you called it quite a while back, uh, three four months ago, and you said it's heading to thirty three. It's really uh, showing a lot of strength here as well. 
Yeah, and silver's you know had a big pullback um, in February, and I actually was looking for it to go a little bit lower, and then like gold, it rallied up on the fear trade. Silver again is overbought at these levels um, in the short run, but bigger picture, I, I love silver longer term. You know, I've been saying it's going to go to the thirty since it was seventeen and change, and um, I still feel that way. But in the near term, you're overbought in silver here, so you you're probably going to get some backing and filling, but. Um, you know, if, if a banking crisis arises, people are going to go right back into the precious metals. So, you know, again, you're going to have to monitor it because uh, there's no stronger emotion in trading than fear. It, it, it supersedes greed. And um, that's the one safe haven the market is looking at right now is precious metals. But they are both gold and silver, both overbought on the daily chart right now. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Hey. Uh, so Bitcoin also is uh, reacting uh, like it's it's a safe haven once again. Yeah, Bitcoin is reacting like it's a safe haven. Ever since this banking crisis began, Bitcoin really took off. Um, it, it, it actually reacted just like gold, but it is no gold. It is not gold. It is not a precious metal. So while you know the charts right now are still um, showing a little bit more upside to go, uh, it's on borrowed time at this stage of the game. I don't think there's going to be a lot left in Bitcoin, but I think there could be a little sliver here. Uh, the bigger picture is that Bitcoin has a very, very negative chart overall uh, when you look at a weekly, a weekly or monthly chart. So again, uh, be very, very careful if you're holding Bitcoin now. You know, just start to trail your stop loss because uh, when the declines start in the market again, Bitcoin will will get hit, and the bigger par pattern is ultimately bearish. All right. And uh, let's see. I guess that is about it for today. Um, we had one question from somebody about Nat Gas. I just wanted to cover it because trading at like an all time uh, or 20 plus year low down in the low twos. Uh, obviously, that's not the case uh, to uh, to European and Asian Nat Gas, which is trading, you know, upwards of 17 to $20. Uh, are we at the bottom yet? And when does it go higher? No, I think we're at the bottom. So when you look at net gas, it's not an easy trade right now, um, just because it hasn't, you know, performed very well. Everybody's, you know, looking for this thing to take off. We did have a big pop in um, late February. That rally lasted, you know, roughly two weeks into early March. And then we pulled back again. But this is a big monthly chart structure. So if anybody wants to pull up a monthly chart, you'll see that we had a big, big bottoming tail in February, a little retrace of that bottoming tail. And I think net gas is poised to go a lot higher now. So it's just going to take time. These monthly charts don't play out like daily charts. They're not immediate gratification type plays. But um, if you could sit in the pocket for net gas, I think you're going to be rewarded. I think it's definitely in a bottoming process. And um, again, nothing goes up in a straight line, nothing goes down in a straight line, but this is very, very oversold on a bigger time frame chart, meaning the monthly chart. So it, it looks good and looks poised for me for a move higher. I own it, full disclosure. So um, I'm in it and uh, we'll see how it does. All right. All right. Well, interesting times. That's for sure. Make sure you go over to Nick's site in the money stocks.com. See, always beating the averages for decades. The Twitter feeds at ITMS, at Nick Santiago01, at Kerry Lutz. Emails welcome KL at KerryLutz.com. Make sure you write your comments down below on the YouTube channel. And Nick, we will talk to you on Friday. Sounds good, Kerry.